okay, we're trying now to uh, reflect the most recent uh, beliefs of learning researchers that it's the learner that is the center of this equation, not the teacher. Uh, we used to have a slogan, you have to, you have to sort of morph away from the, uh, the sage who's on the stage into the guide that's on the side. So we, we started talking a lot about student-centered learning. And student-centered learning is still kind of teacher-directed in many instances. Uh, but we're looking at ways to increase the learner's role in directing the learning activities. And so that's where we talk about learner presence. Uh, making the learner aware of their responsibility and giving them the tools and the freedom to make decisions that are in fact meaningful in directing their learning activities. Well, that's one, one way you can do it is to allow students to ask questions of what they are reading rather than answer questions that you are asking. So that is pedagogical in nature and, and learner-centered. But you can also, uh, certainly as many teachers do, let them choose the issues they would like to do their term research paper on. Uh, let them decide which conversations in a threaded discussion they want to participate in as an active participant so that they can uh, more or less customize their learning path uh, based upon their own interests and uh, career goals and so forth. And one further thing, and that's about the assessment issue that plagues a lot of uh, new online teachers. How, are, how do they uh, do their best to get valid and reliable assessments of learning? And one of the things that I like to mention there is that uh, when you assess using the daily work that you're assigning to your students, which is primarily discussions and perhaps frequent small assignments, uh, it's less likely that a student will get assistance from others in that frequent daily activity than if you limit your assessment to two or three high stakes assessments uh, throughout the semester. And additionally, if your assessments are customized for each individual learner, for example, I like to use a reflective blog assessment where they have to reflect upon what they have been learning and expound upon how what they are learning impacts them in a personal way, how they think, how they feel, how they act. And it's very difficult for somebody to write that for you. So that would be another way to make sure that the person who's getting assessed is the actual person who's enrolled in the class.